Hi there, Louis here and welcome to Acorn Hill. I thought I'd give you an impromptu tour of our garden. The lighting is good, the weather is fine, we have no harsh sunlight, so I hope you enjoy it. Um, but I wanted to show you right now. The time is now, I hope you enjoy the video. So like I said, I uh, thought I'd take you around this afternoon and show you what's going on on the upper part of our, uh, it's a mixture of perennial, herbaceous and uh, woody perennial uh, upper garden and over here uh, you can take a look at a few of them on the right side of the screen you can see a really vigorous growing set of vitex that I planted last um, last year most of them uh, have been bought uh, at a discount price about 75% off when I went on an off-season sale at one of my big big box stores in the area at the very end um, right there you can also see uh, a project that I did it's a trellis that will house a, a future climbing uh, roast uh, at the end of the garden you can see that there's also um, a gravel path um, during the time that we built the gardens just lay down a basic gravel uh, on top of um, a weed control barrier uh, the entire part of the garden was filled uh, with weeds at one point and the only way the only means for me to control the weed is to lay down this black tarp which so far has worked out pretty well um, on the right side, um, I, I steps um, last winter as well. Over here, you can see the vitex, and you can see a bobo hydrangea from Proven Winners that's growing as well. Um, there's a liatris that I got from uh, Southern Living. Um, this part right here, I call this the woodland garden and I'm slowly developing that area. I have a dying, a wilting rhododendron over there that I need to fix. Um, more likely from uh, water logging and, and I need to uproot that and, and plant that somewhere else. But moving right along, along the left side of that, of the woodland garden, you can see this big uh, wax myrtle that just grew from out of nowhere. And this is probably four years old. And you can see from the size of it, it could really cast a shadow uh, when the branches had started cascading and underneath it I put a lot of hydrangeas of different kinds and a rhododendron as well so hopefully with with the growing cascading branches and leaves and foliage of this wax myrtle that we can have enough shade and so far things have been working out okay um, it's the first year for these hydrangeas to be in and just picture a big hedge of hydrangea growing underneath the wax myrtle and this this will be covered with a lot of color um, a much needed pop of color during the time uh, when the garden is still just popping up from from uh, the winter time over there at the end you can see that the hydrangea is still pink and I'm working on that by putting uh, water soluble um, water soluble plant food uh, with acid in it so that we could get that hydrangea to turn blue uh, much similar to the ones that are along the front moving again to the left there's a couple more hydrangea bushes over there this is one of my fails an epic fail because I do want a dogwood to grow over here in between the wax myrtle and the rhododendron but that thing is dead um, so that's one of my fails. Not everything in the garden uh, grows as plant. Moving right along, you can see more healthy growing vitex trees. These shrubs used to be just two feet um, tall last year and they're probably about four feet now based on the growth habit that they have. I have a dogwood over here that so far is working out okay and it's growing at the position that I planted it in. This gets full sun and I hope that that dogwood doesn't get burned. Um, they wreck full sun and I'm hoping for all these wax myrtles in, in the back, along the back to grow, get more branches. 
so we can get more uh, shade, at least part shade going on for some of the, the dogwood that needs to be protected over here. This is an area that I also need to work on. I have, have a nepeta over here. I'll try to remember when I start editing this video and put the name on the screen. This is a gara, a wand flower. Uh, that really is beautiful and hopefully it will grow out. I got that for two bucks uh, at a local garden shop. Uh, so hopefully that can grow. According to the tag, it grows about four feet tall and about two to three feet wide. So we'll see how that goes. I may need to transplant some of these um, little perennials over here. Um, that is a salvia, one of my favorite perennials that really gives a lot uh, during the growing season. A limelight, um, no wait, a um, lemon coral sedum, a form of sedum that is really not lemon coral right now. It kind of looks like it's turning red, um, maybe from the sun, maybe from lack of water. I have a drip system over here. You can look at that brown tube. The garden is filled with um, tubing that I also planned and, and laid down myself uh, last fall. And they all seem to work well in watering my plants. Um, I got some, uh, what is that, a, a lamb's ear in the back that I just popped in. You know, I figured we'd, we'd get that to grow a little bit over there. Uh, that's the one I'm talking about. Um, a daylily, um, really uh, toughest boots plant that really helps me a lot give texture and, and vertical interest and color. Oh, got a garbage bag over there, so excuse that. Um, oriental lilies. Uh, these lilies also talk about tough as boots. They, they always grow year after year, and they give me a lot. Uh, right now, if you can just smell, only if you could smell the scent that is wafting through this little corner. They are strong. They're potent, um, pleasantly potent, and, and it's nice when we walk around this corner, we can really smell um, the lily as it blooms. And a, a nice colored gladiolus, gladiola growing. Pardon the lighting, I'm using my iPhone as I video this, but it seems to work out okay for now, and you get the idea. But look at that color orange along the front with the yellow in the background and the healthy greenery both of the sword-like appearance of the leaves of the gladiolus and as well as the lily in the back that they're, they're just they kind of pretty much naturally grew in there um i like that i like that look a lot we go to the the gravel path to the side i've got a few uh things that are faded i should have done um, a tour during the springtime and, and we'll try our best to cover as much as we could at the moment um, some of them have faded but as you can tell um, this plant over here is called Aleatris the one with the purple spire coming up from the ground I'll be able to give you more details about those plants as we go along as you continue to follow my channel um, but it does give a good vertical interest to this area of the garden. Look at those gladiolas. They just popped up this morning. Um, and that color right there, along with the blue, the purple, and pretty soon the limelight hydrangea that's growing over here will give that nice white uh, to neutralize all the cool colors that are coming up along this border. You can see that I have my um painted pot over there um there we go sorry about that used to be color brown that's made of resin but i decided we decided to paint it uh, our signature um turquoise color it seems to work out pretty well the alocasia um the elephant ear in the middle which builds out from the middle of that pot uh, does the trick, but again with full sun. It's my first year growing them. It, it got scorched It's really gotten beaten by the Sun um, The petunia that's spilling out along with the creeping Jenny the green one uh, Really serves a, a filler uh, For that part of the pot and we have five of those in the garden 
along the retaining wall and one day we'll do a post uh, just covering on how this entire garden was built and the retaining wall is also part of the feature of the garden that I intentionally did uh, when I initially sketched uh, this part. More plants as we go along. Um, that is a Veronica with a bee on it. These pollinators have really liked our garden and they keep on visiting, which we really don't mind. The more bees, the better, and the more butterflies. I've seen a few butterflies come through, uh, but more of the bees, and um, that gives us joy um, every time we see them. Another Liatris, uh, the one with the puffy top, um, colored pink, or maybe purple in the screen. Um, over here, this is one of my favorite perennials as well. This um, blotches are um, purple is a verbena and it's a lollipop kind and it's called verbena bonariensis. Um, tough plant uh, needs uh, good well draining soil with a lot of compost in it um, but with the humidity here um, the problem that this, this perennial has is powdery mildew as you can see from the leaves and they are right there you see the white splashes of white on the leaves um, spray some neem oil will do the trick um, for that so I'm panning out again and we're going continue to go to this path and you see the, the black tarp that I put on the ground without the tarp this entire bed there's a hill, you know, there's a berm, a natural berm, a hill that goes up the end of my property and that's the pretty much the border of the property right there. A rose that is struggling, it's alive, but it struggles to maintain its foliage because of the rabbits that are here in the area. And that is why I have this, hear that? a uh, deterrent. It's a uh, solar powered our deterrent. Apparently it has some ultrasonic waves. It gives off that sound and it fends off um, rodents and vermin and rabbits and all that within the area. I don't know if it does work because look the rose is right beside it and the rose has been pretty much eaten out by the rabbits but we'll see. Continue to pan out, continue to pan out. The reason why I um, decided to finally do this tour is for you guys to see this again. These lilies serve us really, really well. Um, I do not know what kind, but it has that creamy yellow, buttery yellow uh, tint to it, to the petals um, with a nice swath of, of uh, pink along each petal and they are beautiful they are big there's netting that cover this part of the garden from that border by the tree trunk which is really a volunteer uh, pear that just grew in this area in this spot of the garden and then if I pan over to that side you can still see you can still see the net. This is to deter and prevent the deer from chewing my plants. I did a post before where I had, uh, I'd removed a poison ivy and that poison ivy was located right there. You may have seen the video of it so I'll, I'll put a link to this video so you can see my little adventure when I did that. This is pretty much the woodlands and you can see that there's a lot of thicket wax myrtle um, I planted that arborbita um, I don't know five years ago uh, it is a dwarf kind so it doesn't grow as tall as I wanted to but my neighbors there's a plane passing through my neighbors planted beautiful evergreen that really gives a lot of structure to this area 
So texture, greenery, depth, that's what we get in this part of the garden. There's also a video that I did, pardon the lighting here. There's a video that I did where I had to transplant all of these daylilies from a different part of our garden and decided to put them over here because next year this will be filled with those with those blooms. Look at that color orange. And just imagine this entire end of the garden filled with a different layer, different layer of greens with a lot of those um, orange flowers that will cover that section. I'll also put up a video sometime on how I built this per this um, this trellis, this tutor. I'll show you how it's done and hopefully um, we'll give you another idea in what to do with your garden. That's pretty much it from this side. Oh, let me talk to you about what plants I have over here. So I have a climbing rose right there that has now grown. And in a couple of weeks, I will start bending the cane so it could go directly from there. This could go from there to there and start growing up up the two tour up the trellis got the daylily over here it's about to burst it's about to burst and give us some flowers um, a boxwood right here I got a lot of iris I have a big collection of iris that um, a local lady uh, gave me four years ago and, and I have a lot of them this time of the year, in June, the, the garden has really burst. And you can see that there's a lot of texture now and a lot of growth that happened. Um, again, these are our lilies and, and look at all of that. So, so far they're about three and a half feet tall. I have a set of lilies on a different garden bed, which is right over there, right by the pot. Wait, adjust the lighting here. Right. Uh, hang on. See if I can point it out to you. Right there. That is six feet tall. From the soil, from the ground level, all the way up to the tip of it. I'm really proud of that patch because I have a few that will burst into bloom pretty soon. But that's for a different video over here this is the vista that i really like coming from this angle if i stand here under the pear tree that vista right there is a winner um, just imagine that there's no uh, black tarp but you can imagine um, if that's covered in green or some other textured plant. Um, I really like this area. Many of you have seen, oh, look at that, look at that alocasia leaf um, over there, scorched and dried. So, lesson learned, you know, we're not going to do this probably next year, but we'll put those. Uh, I have about 18 alocasia bulbs that I need to put. In an area of the garden where there will be morning sun so that that should be okay for next year for now they serve their purpose uh, an antique armillary that i got i think that's what it's called but it's it's an antique uh, that i got from a consignment shop in connecticut when we used to live in the northeast the gladioli over here the pink gladioli the liatris and you can see that the blue and that purple uh, really just it, it does a lot in this area And that's what I what I see when I'm under the tree over here I hope this gives you a little bit of an idea of what the garden looks like at least from this end um, the winding path the gravel um, we've, we've liked having this gravel because when we walk there's That crunch it's very tactile and you can really hear it um, gives you a much uh, better experience when when you're watering hand watering or 
wand watering the area. Anyway, thank you for spending some time with me right now. Um, we'll see you again in the next video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do click the subscribe button. And there is an, a bell icon beside it. And it's a notification bell to just let you know that I've got a new video that I've put out. I appreciate your time. I'm signing out for now. This is Louie in Acorn Hill. Bye-bye.